Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin, and welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And today, a vintage appliance video. Appliance, gadget, you could call it one or the other. But uh, a few weeks ago, I did a bean dip video. Uh, I've made it a number of times since then. Very good. And it is uh, something that is made in a food processor. And so I used one of my good old trusty Cuisinart food processors to make the dip. And I mentioned uh, that uh, I could do a video, an appliance video on food processors. And some of you said yes, please. So I'm going to do that, but it occurred to me that really I have to break it in two parts. So I'll do a future one on electric food processors like the Cuisinart's and the Le Machine and uh, some of those other ones uh, because today I just want to focus on manual food processors. In other words, things that do a lot of the same stuff that the electric ones do, but they do it manually, they're without electricity, by hand. Um, and a food processor is actually something that uh, in one form or another has been around for a long time, longer than we might think, but they really came into the modern age, um, say, you know, really in the in the 40s, 50s, and so on. And um, I want to talk about one that is a favorite of mine and has been used for a long time. And that is a Mouli, Moulinet. Okay, and look at that French chef right there. Okay, what a seal of approval. So, these are food process, manual food processors. Uh, uh, I know that one of these, this one was made in France. Not sure if this one was made in France or not. But uh, they originate in France. And, and, and here it says Mouly Salad Maker. And that is sort of what it was designed to help with. Uh, although it does a lot of other things, of course. But... Um, you know, raise your hand if you ever went to the state fair. Maybe you still go to the state fair. Well, when I was a kid, we went to the Michigan State Fair every year, and it was a big deal and a lot of fun. And while my siblings were off at the Midway, uh, going on rides and playing games, um, I love to go into the agricultural tents and see all the stuff that was being made and manufactured in Michigan and look at the animals. My mom and dad always went to sort of the big stage. There was all kinds of great entertainment there. And I always got hooked into watching. My mom always knew where to find me. One of the hucksters on the, off the midway who was selling things, particularly stuff related to food prep, pots and pans, and kitchen gadgets. And they almost always had some sort of food processor. I was fascinated. I would sit in the front row and, you know, every half an hour the guy would do his spiel and do his demonstration with, you know, all the vegetables and I would just watch it mesmerized over and over again. So here I am, you know, many, many, many years later, and I'm still fascinated by this stuff. So anyways, the Mooley, um, this is one of the older models from the 1950s, and I don't know, this could have been purchased at a department store. Uh, but it very well could have been purchased at a fair, um, a big, you know, a big show, an expo of some sort. 
Uh, these salesmen were all over the place selling these gadgets. Uh, but uh, what you have here basically is um, the machine, and, and, and look at, I love how this is just all in its box. You have the machine here. Now, this is an all metal version. And here it says, oh, Muli Salad Maker. It's embossed on the front. And then it says, made in France. Well, let's face it. Back in the mid part of the 20th century, stuff from France had a bit of a cachet to it. Um, and uh, France was certainly known for its cuisine. So anything kitchen related from France just had to be good. So here's a later version, but you can see also made in France. They went to a plastic body, but the design is largely the same. You've got three legs so that it sits here on the counter. And then you've got, here is the directions for the Muli salad maker and recipes. So it'll tell you what each one of the discs are. So this is a number two fine shredding disc as an example. Super fine shredder. What do we got here? Um, this is a slicer. And we got a, a chopper and a chopper grater, and one more that fell underneath. And this is a shredding disc. So this you would use for shredding cheese, uh, things of that sort. And it was a completely simple design. You had a hopper here where you put the food, but first you put the disc in. And so. Um, It just simply went like so, fit right in there. And then you have your crank, which goes through this hole and into the center, and it has to fit a certain kind of way here that locks in. There you go. So you put your piece of your vegetable here, say you're shredding carrots or a chunk of cheese. You put it in the hopper. This you use to press down and you turn. And basically it just presses the food against that blade and out underneath on a piece on a plate or a bowl or a piece of waxed paper. You know this would fit over a bowl too. It was had a pretty wide stance. You would have um, mountains of coleslaw, right? Uh, you would chop onions so fast there wouldn't be time to cry. I'm trying to think of all the um, uh, little expressions that the sales guys used to, to make. But here it is. Um, and basically, it was very easy to use, very easy to clean. Um, and the whole idea was... Uh, you know, a great way to save time in the kitchen. Uh, you didn't have to do all this cutting, all this fussing. It was a nice way to get your family to eat more vegetables because you could prepare them uh, in sort of new and fanciful ways. So this is the Muli, And like I said, here is sort of the original all metal version. And then Later, they came out with this plastic version, but virtually the really the same design. Again, you had a series of, uh, came with five blades for five different types of tasks. And again, you know, sat on the, uh, over a plate or over a bowl, and all you had to do was put the food in the hopper and turn the crank and out came all this wonderful stuff. So that's the Muli. Okay, um, 
I'm here solo today, so I'm going to move the moolie and we're going to take a look at the Salad King. Okay, next up is the Salad King. This was made by RenaWare, which made very high-end um, pots and pans. Very high-end. They also made electric skillets um, that often had an oil-filled base uh, to ensure even heating. But they were, I don't know if they're still in business or not. I will ask our friend Hans, I'm sure he knows. Um, but they made really high-end stuff and <clears throat> this uh, th this was sort of di usually done at direct sales so they didn't always sell these in stores you bought them directly from the company or from a sales rep um, they might have been shilling them out on the midway at, at the state fair too but this is what it looked this is with the salad king this, and I'm going to tell you what, this is a heavy unit. It's got suction cup feet, okay, so it kind of sits secure on the counter. And then you'll see uh, here it has a crank, and here it has a mechanism by which you insert one of these cones. Really an ingenious method. Um, and these cones are very heavy gauge steel. And uh, you have a cone for chopping, and you have a cone for shredding, and you have a cone for slicing. Um, and so you put the cone, the cone's got uh, these openings here on the back side of it. And those interlock with the mechanism on the inside and you can see what happens so here's your hopper here's where you're putting your uh, you, your cabbage your carrots your whatever it is that you are uh, your potatoes okay now you're putting that up here here's you get a bowl and you do you put your vegetable and here you go however you want to do it and it just uh, it just pours it out again it's not doing anything that an electric food processor wouldn't do it it's just sort of doing it differently and it's doing it um, using you know just through the crank and, and without need of an electric motor uh, and here is the booklet which of course explains uh, everything that there is to know uh, about this appliance and all kinds of um, wonderful recipes in here. Potato pancakes, cheese balls, buttered turnips, zucchini, skillet cabbage, glazed carrots, um, vegetable chowder. Anyways, all right here with your salad king. Okay, stay tuned, more to come. Okay folks, here's our next one and perhaps one of the most famous food processors and um, state fair gimmicks that was ever marketed. This is the Feimsters Famous vegetable slicer ladies and gentlemen you see that um, excellent for slicing potatoes onions cucumbers tomatoes and various other vegetables also for shredding cabbage for coleslaw um, no screws to adjust no blade to insert high carbon blue steel blade caution blade very sharp made in Cincinnati Ohio here you go. So uh, let me know if you or anybody you ever knew had one of these Feimsters famous vegetable slicers. The guys who used to demonstrate these were par excellence. Uh, they really, really sold it. And this is, a, here's the box. And this is what you got on the inside. 
You got a instruction manual with a few recipes um, and but not a whole lot of information. Here's the slicer itself. It's got a, a blade guard there. Very, it is very sharp, okay? Basically, it's a, a razor. Then you've got this little gizmo here. This slides, I mean, gosh, in terms of materials, I, you know, if this cost at the time 30 cents to make, it was a fortune. But this is how it goes, folks, okay? You, you adjust this blade based on how thick you want your slice to be. Very thin to, th to very thick, okay? And then you just swipe. You just swipe your vegetables across the blade here and to whatever thickness you have it set on. And that's it. There's nothing more to it. Uh, it's really just a stationary knife blade. Uh, and it's, um, boy, they, these were not expensive. I want to say that they were selling these for um, $7.95 or $5.95 or something like that. Now, believe me, they made a lot on each one, okay? But very simple and straightforward. Uh, the Feimsters famous vegetable slicer. So, in the spirit of the Feimsters famous vegetable slicer, same basically idea. This is a world famous galloping gourmet. Raise your hand if you remember Graham Kerr, uh, the Galloping Gourmet, who had a uh, very popular cooking show in the late 60s and early 70s. Well, this is a mandolin. And a mandolin is basically the same sort of idea as the, um, as the Feimsters. And if I can figure out how to get it out, here we go. So, this is the mandolin. It is meant to go over a bowl uh, or, a, you know, a dish or something like that. And basically, instead of a single blade, it has a V blade. And it has one of these. So this is where you... You stick that into your potato. By the way, you want to make scalloped or au gratin potatoes, a mandolin is a great tool. I mean, unless you're really good at cutting each slice exactly the same width with a knife, which I am not, I always use my galloping gourmet mandolin. And so anyways, you had various blades that you put that you could stick in here. Here's one for doing like julienne strips. Um, and you would you could also adjust the thickness of the slice. And you know you would just do this over a bowl with the, again with your potato, your tomato, your carrot, your cucumber, whatever it was that you were doing very much the same idea as what the Feimsters was, although the Feimsters was just a straight, relatively small blade. The mandolin gives you, a, gives you much more um, room, uh, much wider, uh, so it allows you to cut things in different directions. I like to use something like this if I'm making eggplant parmesan, and I can take that eggplant and I can cut it lengthwise down the eggplant for some nice layers, okay, as an example. So this is actually a gadget that, you know, go into a kitchen store or a kitchen department in a, in a department store or certainly online, you could, there's all kinds of mandolins for sale. 
this this is a gadget that really did stand the test of time because it's fairly inexpensive and it's very versatile and it is a food processor so okay the galloping gourmet v-blade mandolin slicer so here we have a kitchenier by rival so uh, many of us will recognize the brand Rival as makers of the crock pot and Rival made a lot of other stuff. They made can openers and um, all kinds of other small appliances and among them was the Kitchenier and this box contains a Kitchenier combination meat grinder and food chopper vegetable and fruit shredder slicer grater Rival Manufacturing Company, Kansas City, Missouri. So here it is. Um, and actually, there's one in the box. This is a complete set. And this one does have, in addition to the shredding and chopping, uh, it has the meat grinder attachment that you could put on the top. So in addition to just slicing and shredding, you could uh, actually grind meats, make your own hamburger or other ground meat, grind up vegetables for relishes, fruits, for uh, jellies, jams, canning, things of that sort. So anyways, the Rival Kitchenier, and it basically was a rotary kind of a food processor, not unlike the Salad King that we saw earlier. So in terms of uh, processing foods with regards to slicing and shredding and things like that, grating. Here you had very much like the Salad King, you had a cone disc um, or a, a cone shaped insert that you would put here and you had a food hopper and you'd put the bowl where I put it, you'd put the bowl here, okay uh, and this one uh, that's on right now is for, um, it looks like sort of fancy uh, slicing, um, uh, making ridged uh, designs in whatever it was that you were cutting. Um, and here you have uh, grating, grinding, here is a thick slice cone, a thin slice cone. These are very heavy gauge. This is not chintzy. These were very well made. Uh, and they are, uh, you know, really heavy gauge steel. Uh, and you can see the bottom here has these suction cups uh, meant to sort of really secure it to the countertop so that you had a good grip and you would just turn. So. For chopping and uh, slicing, this really was what you used. Then you would switch the top out and you would put in this hopper here and then you had these round sort of concaved discs that would fit on here. And in this case, what you would do is you would put on a disc. Here's um, that's for slicing. Here is uh, large grade, smaller grading, and then what I've got on right now is very small grading uh, for maybe things like Parmesan cheese or chocolate or whatever. You'd put it in the hopper here and you'd press it against the blade and turn, and it would come into the bowl again very heavy. Uh, the bottom is sort of a, a, a powder coated pot metal but uh, the mechanism is stainless steel and heavy gauge steel. So that is the Kitchenier from Rival. Uh, and I've seen a lot of those over the years. And then sort of akin to this, here's another system. Works the same way except this one 
is all chrome plated. Isn't that pretty? Uh, again, it's got these very large suction cups on the bottom. Uh, and this is called a food cutter. Uh, the instruction manual has a copyright date of 1955. So this baby's almost 70 years old. Hard to imagine. Anyways, but here, I love, there's an illustration in the book here for the shredder number one uh, cone. And it shows the person shredding bars of ivory soap uh, to use as, you know, laundry detergent or dish detergent or something like that. Um, excellent for making soap flakes. Uh, sh um, and shampoo is made quickly and easily from harder soap. Well, there you go. So it's not just for food. It's so funny how they used to really think of every possible use. And this one uh, is pretty deluxe because it has five cones, a uh, shredder, a stringer, a thin slicer, a waffler, and a thick slicer. So again, same thing, you have a hopper, you have a, a circular cone-shaped insert uh, that you can change out easily depending on the task, and you go ahead and put in your fruits, vegetables, bar of soap, as it may be, whatever it is that you're doing, and this is the food cutter, another great manual food processor. And finally, how can we talk about manual food processors without talking about the greatest salesman of all time, Ron Popeil, and uh, the many gadgets that he was promoting uh, over the years. And this may not, um, I don't know if this translates uh, to so many of our food friends are in other parts of the world, but here in the United States, there was a guy from Chicago, Ron Papil, and he had uh, a company called Ronco, among other things, that made all kinds of gadgets. And he was one of the first direct-to-consumer marketers on TV, uh, but his stuff was also sold, I know it state fairs and other trade shows and things like that and boy he sold a lot of stuff over the years and I think some of his stuff was even sold in department stores um, and so I've got a few examples and they were food processors uh, they certainly qualify uh, and they are they are in the food processor department here at the cavalcade uh, along with the other things we've seen. So here is uh, an early, one of his early um, gizmos, inventions, contraptions, whatever you want to call it. And this is the Chopomatic and the new giant food chopper, stainless steel, automatic rotating blade. And uh, it says, Chopomatic is the largest and fastest all-purpose household food chopper in the world. Enjoy its food magic convenience in these suggested uses. So it has on the side things that you can make. Meats, chopped liver, okay, um, hash, all kinds of seafood, vegetables of course, coleslaw, relishes, hash brown potato, potato pancakes, um, desserts, baking salads with fruits and dried fruits and nuts, things of that nature. Check this out, folks. Endorsed by the International Cooks Association, an organization of culinary craftsmen since 1906. This guy knew how to sell. Here you have the directions on the other side of knowing your chop -o matic and how to assemble. And... Um, yeah, manufactured by Popeil Brothers, Chicago, Illinois. So, most of his stuff consisted of a combination of metal and plastic. So, here's the Chopomatic. 
here it is and you can see it's a spring activated thing and when you when you push down whoop okay when you push down it turns and it just plunges down um, so that you can essentially put a cutting board here whatever you put under it is going to get chopped and I don't know if you can see but that blade keeps turning it kind of turns clockwise about a quarter turn and so to thoroughly chop it I'm not sure what this part is it's a, either a guard or an extension of some sort and I will have to have to read up on it um, but anyways, this is the Papil Chopomatic. And then here, this is the Papil Minute Chef. Plain and fancy food cutter, saves time, saves work, slices, shreds, juliennes, ripples, and waffles. Okay? Um, it's got a copyright date of 1967 on the bottom. And it's got a price tag on the top from Yankee Department Stores. And we didn't have any of those that I know of in Michigan. I think those were more out east. But this had a price of $7.77. And then it has a sales sticker here, $4.09. So someone got themselves a nice bargain on the Minute Chef. So let's take a look at this Minute Chef. Again, it whoop, is uh, plastic and what's in the box? Okay. So who remembers this? Now we, we're looking at that um, uh, mandolin, Galloping Gourmet Mandolin. Folks, this is really a mandolin. This is sort of the, um, the same idea. You've got a very sharp carbon blade right here. Okay? And then you've got this little dial-o-matic, little dial on the side. And as you turn it, it changes the level of this blue tray. So, in other words, it either puts it closer to the blade or further away from the blade so you could have different thicknesses of slices going through and you've got a little pusher here that goes into the center groove and kind of again because that blade is sharp and if you don't want to lose a fingertip you know this is how you do it and that's basically all there was to this uh, Oh. And look, it came with a French garnishing tool, garnishing cutter, stainless steel. Remember how I was saying about the Mouli? Anything French seemed uh, très sophisticate, uh, especially with um, uh, uh, cuisine and cooking and things like this. This is basically a waffle cutter or a crinkle cutter blade that fits in there as well very sharp I'm trying to be careful so I don't cut myself um, you couldn't sell this stuff today okay it, it would not it would not pass OSHA regulations and it a dollar value has a dollar on the end so, so you were really getting something extra when you bought this and here is the recipes and operating instructions look who's on the cover the French chef Mm. Magnifique, uh, and it gives you all kinds of uh, ways that you can use your Popeil Minute Chef. Not sure what these went for. Um, you know, probably nine ninety nine, something like that. Maybe they had. Well, we know this one. Okay, the retail was seven seventy seven. So, I don't know. I guess they sold about in that price range. And then finally, we have the Popeil Vegematic slices, dices, chips, makes julienne fries, folks. Another great 
Popeil product. It says on the top, this is the Vegematic Food Preparer. Um, Popeil Brothers, 1969 uh, is the copyright date on the bottom. And this one, we will take it out. Again, it's just a big old plastic thing. Um, this one's a little, whoever used it last didn't do a very good job cleaning, I will say. Here's your use and care book um, for the Vegematic. Tells you how much time and money you are going to save in the kitchen. Um, most women prepare 1,095 meals a year. So, you know, this is really going to help. Uh, you could do thin slices, dice and french fry cut, thick slices. Yeah. Anyways, it gives you all the tricks. And basically, what the Vegematic was, was a guillotine. Okay? I see it has two locking mechanisms. Whoop, here we go. Okay? You put your potato, your onion, your tomato, your pepper, your whatever. Your, okay? And you can see this blade that's in it, okay, has got, uh, it's kind of a cross hatch style and it is going to you're going to put it there and this is all you're going to do folks you just get one easy press down you're going to push that uh, piece of vegetable or fruit right through those blades it's going to come out the bottom and uh, your work is done how about that so um, boy he sold a lot of these and I remember vividly seeing a demonstration for one of these uh, at a fair uh, and of course I was trans absolutely transformed I might have suggested to my mom that she got one and uh, she you know kind of rolled her eyes and said oh I think I'll be okay she figured she could live without this but a lot of people just knew they had to have it um, blade settings thin slice julienne dice french fries thick slice so that's it, right there. You lock it down, and you're all set. Keep it handy, folks. You'll use it each and every day. So, the Vegematic. So, we have the Vegematic, the Minute Chef, the Chopomatic. Uh, these are gadgets, and I guess essentially everything that we kind of looked at today was a gadget in some ways, because if you're good with a knife, honestly, you can do about all the food processing that is necessary. Some of these things make a little quicker work of it, but you know, you know then you got to clean it all, um, and that is always my dilemma. I love my Cuisinart food processor and other food processors, but depending on the volume of what I'm chopping, I have to make a call because there's a lot of parts to those food processors and they all have to be washed afterwards. And if I can, if I'm just needing to chop an onion, you know what? I have my cutting board, I have good knives, and I can do it quickly. So, um, but again, what would this world be without inventors and marketing? and all these things that have been manufactured over the years uh, designed to make our life easier. So I hope you enjoyed looking at this sampling of manual food processors here in the Cavalcade collection. I'll do a future video and we'll look at the electric food processors, um, but I just, I just thought it would be fun to start with these uh, because some of them are really iconic. Uh, and I thought it would bring back maybe some memories for those of us of a certain age who might remember seeing some of this stuff. And you know what? They still make uh, different kinds of manual food processors today. I see them all the time in the, in the kitchen departments of stores and uh, in specialty stores. So nothing new under the sun, really. But I appreciate you watching. Um, 
there is a website called Cavalcade of Food, and I invite you to check that out if you want to connect to all the things that I do in my spare time. Uh, as well, I ask you if you haven't subscribed and you like the videos, please subscribe to the channel. It does help me out a bit when you subscribe. Share the video with any like-minded person you might know, somebody who's like us, who enjoys seeing these vintage uh, kitchen helpers, uh, and among other things that I feature here on the channel. But most of all, I appreciate your time and spending it with me. I hope everybody is well, and I will look forward to seeing you again real soon, right back here on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody.